Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Michal Hrošecký, and I'm going to talk about SaltStack. And uh, yeah, it's not going to be beginner's presentation, but it's also not going to be any hardcore and best practices stuff. It's going to be something in between. The target audience that I thought about was people that already do some orchestration and some server administration and already use some more kind of uh, tool for that, but would be interesting in, interested in what SALT has to offer. And basically in, in the past, I used, uh, I used to use Puppet, I tried Ansible, and then I migrated to SALT. Um, I found in SALT a few really interesting features that I wanted to share with everybody. So that's why I'm here. But uh, yeah, this slide is empty. But uh, what is SALT stack? It's one of the orchestration tools that are out there. And what is orchestration? Uh, Basically, the idea of orchestration is that you have some simple facts about the server. Uh, you have some uh, some code that uh, f actually changes the configuration files, restarts the services, and stuff like that. But in the end, you don't want to describe uh, individual commands and ind individual shell scripts for every server. You want to be able to provide high-level overview of your servers and uh, share, the, share the code that actually does the important stuff. So what you want to do is uh, you want to say that uh, once upon a time, there were two servers. Their name was, uh, in my case, Quick and Flibble. And Quick was working hard as a database server, and Flibble was uh, a web server. And that's what you want to say in your uh, in your source files for your orchestration tool. And then somewhere in background, you want to have somebody who defined it might be even you what the web server means and what, what the database server means with all the optimization and all the nifty stuff. And then when you decide that uh, your previous approach was uh, wrong, you will just change the implementation of that and rerun everything and your servers will be set up in a new way and configuration will be altered and stuff like that. So you describe the servers this way you run the tool and the configuration changes. So this is uh, just some human language uh, that I used for describing the server. So how do we actually get there to the actual code that uh, the tool can understand? Well, in SALT, there is a nice trick to that. You put a hash uh, fairy tale at stop and it might work. Uh, what what it does and uh, how it can happen. Well, uh, one nifty trick that uh, SaltStack has is it has uh, something called renderers. And the configuration files for Salt, by default, is a combination of Jinja and YAML. But uh, at the end, what it boils down to is that you need to get some dictionary out of uh, the configuration file uh, for Python. So it doesn't matter what's the source file, whether it is YAML, JSON, or even a simple fairy tale, if there is a code that will transform it into JSON, uh, into dictionary. So you can write your own renders, you can chain the renders, the default uh, one is uh, Jinja pipe uh, YAML, which means that uh, it runs uh, Jinja on top of the file. Once uh, Jinja expands itself, uh, it is expected to be a valid YAML file, and then it gets loaded. 
what renderers can do in this pipeline is basically they can either transform uh, uh, the dictionary that they get passed to, or they can uh, do text alterations. And uh, interesting options for the renderers is, for example, pass, uh, password store, the uh, password wallet uh, based on GPG or GPG itself, or if you, like me, hate YAML because white spaces shouldn't matter, and uh, you find uh, stuff like uh, braces uh, more understandable, then there are options like JSON 5. So that's uh, one of the neat tricks that uh, actually can, uh, in real world, uh, you wouldn't write there uh, some fairy tale, but it might help you to migrate from any other system that you use to keep track of your servers. And it also might, uh, if you do some kind of fairy tale, it can uh, help uh, non-tech people to actually manage your servers if you trust them enough. But uh, yeah, you can give them just limited options what to do. So uh, how it uh, looks like, it's uh, just a simple uh, Python code. You need to define a function that uh, takes as a data, you get, a, you get the text of the configuration file, and then you just need to return the, dic uh, the dictionary with uh, either states or pillars or something. Uh, one other important part about uh, these orchestration tools is that typically you want to know some uh, information about the machine you are running on. Uh, that's what everybody has, some kinds of facts, like uh, CPU, memory, OS you are running, and stuff like that. But uh, we are living in a connected world, so uh, you typically might want to spy on your neighbors like you have a backend server and frontend server and you want to share information between them somehow and collect information about all your servers in a cluster and deploy the load balancer based on all the uh, servers behind it. Ideal, uh, in uh, best case scenario, dynamically. So what Salt has a... Uh, uh, there to offer, uh, there is uh, something called salt mine, and basically you can uh, get some arbitrary data from any of the minions. You have a in salt you have a master and minions. Uh, master is the controlling one, and minions are the ones running the code and working for him. And with mine you can get arbitrary data from minions to the master, and then uh, share it with other minions and it contains only latest value. What it can be used for, uh, this is uh, something that I took from my uh, server configuration. For example, I'm uh, harvesting SSH keys and IP addresses. So all of my computers have access to public keys of all of my other computers. So Salt can prefill my known host, and I don't have to verify the keys when I'm first connecting to one of my servers. And uh, one of the interesting examples that I came up with uh, was uh, making something like uh, DIN DNS, dynamic DNS. I'm using Knot on my server, and uh, what I wrote there is uh, uh, some default policy that I have enabled. Basically what it does in the end is whenever you change the zone files on the disk, uh, it will create a, a correct version of in uh, SOA and it actually makes, makes it that it works. And uh, then I'm using actually this ugly stuff as a code for records in my zone. 
But basically what I'm doing here is uh, I'm iterating uh, over IPv4 and IPv6, and then I'm going to uh, the mine, the salt mine, and I'm going to all the IP addresses that I gathered from my minions, and then I'm uh, creating uh, DNS entries for them. So whenever IP address on the minion changes, because for example, I have a uh, salt managing even in my notebook, uh, which moves around. So whenever the IP address changes uh, on the next uh, deployment of the DNS server, it will change the zone file and add the correct IP addresses so I don't have to remember them and edit it manually. On servers, your IP addresses uh, doesn't change that much, but uh, I have actually the same stuff here for the SSH keys. So I'm actually filling in uh, SSH FP records in my DNS automatically, and because I'm doing it automatically, I can uh, fill in various uh, types of those keys. And yeah, if I would do it manually, I will be too lazy to copy and paste all of them. But uh, if machine does it, I'm fine with that. Uh, other interesting part is uh, if you know Ansible, or one key feature of Ansible is that you have no master and uh, you run it uh, from wherever and uh, you just connect to the server that you are managing via SSH and you don't have any agents running there for eternity and watching the server and trying to figure out whether to deploy something or not. Um, you can uh, do the same stuff with SALT as well, but I've, I think that uh, the more interesting uh, approach is to actually use the agents and uh, random minions because it allows you to do some really interesting stuff and uh, it provides you with event bus that you can use and abuse. Uh, one thing that uh, SALT has is uh, beacons and it's uh, some kind of way to monitor your infrastructure. Basically, it can uh, check for some value, and if uh, something is wrong, it will create an event and send it on event bus. And then uh, SaltStack also has a reactor, which is a component that uh, sits on the event bus, which is for registered events, and when something happens, it reacts somehow. And the reaction is uh, the direction is typically starting some state. So, yeah. so the trivial example is whenever somebody changes your configuration file, reactor will react and replace it back with the one in uh, your orchestration tool. But uh, you can do much more advanced stuff. Uh, yeah, this is what beacons can look like. Uh, beacon configuration, you can set up, uh, set it up easily to, for example, watch for disk usage, memory usage, status actually does uh, some uh, overall status of the server with uh, various kinds of information. And uh, how reactor configuration looks like, you basically uh, say uh, what event are you looking for and uh, what should happen when uh, the event happens. So, yeah, for example, again, uh, from my configuration, when, whenever a minion uh, joins, I want to apply the state, the full state, and make sure that it's uh, running the latest configuration that I set it up. Also, I use it for other purposes. Uh, this, uh, this rule basically gets uh, fired whenever some job completes. And uh, I wrote a simple website 
that does the monitoring of my servers and it's deployed via salt and basically it takes the data from uh, the status uh, beacon and from uh, return events from the job and uh, based on those data it deploys the website which is static but uh, yeah interesting use cases might be you have a leaking application and uh, you know that you have to restart it once once in a while when it's running low on memory so you can uh, set up a beacon that will monitor mem usage and if it's above some threshold reactor will restart the service and stuff like that well you can do simple stuff like mailing but uh, yeah i think more interesting part is to actually automatically fix what's broken if you can predict what might get, uh, might go wrong So uh, that was a few interesting points that uh, I think uh, are really interesting in SALT. I'm no expert in SALT. I have friends that are, <coughs> and I don't understand them. But uh, yeah, anyway, I wanted to share this. And if you have some questions, we can talk about it now. Are there any questions? Uh, did it sound at least a little bit interesting? How many of you does use some orchestration tools? Most of you? Anybody using Salt? Two? Cool. And are you using any of these features? You two? Okay, at least some of so for you who don't use salt this might help you to decide to give it a try and yeah thank you for your attention and see you somewhere else thank you <laughs>